everybody, welcome to Amnesia Academy. I'm actually not sure what wiki we're on because we missed a couple lessons due to weather and other sorts of factors, but we're just gonna pick up from uh, what last week's lesson was supposed to be, including what this week's lesson's to be, uh, lesson's supposed to be. So this week we're gonna be covering chain shift plus throw options select, throw options flex. First we're gonna cover chain shifts. So if you already know about chain shift, you can wait 15 minutes and I'll get into the throw option select stuff. So, but first we're gonna start with chain shift and warp bowl and what warp bowl is. So warp bowl is when you have more grid than your opponent when the TS cycle completes a full turn and it's indicated by the flashing red or blue indicator at the bottom of the screen. On, if there's warp bowl on the player one side, it's red. And if there's warp bowl on the player two side, it's flashing blue. So the benefits of warp bowl are such that when you have the warp bowl state, you automatically have a 10% damage boost. Uh, okay. You have 10% damage boost and indicated by the bonus damage right under your uh, combo damage. You can see it says like bonus damage plus 206. That's the bonus damage that you get in Vorpal passively. So that's 10%. Furthermore, characters also obtain a special Vorpal trait. Vorpal traits are unique per character, and every character has one except Mika. Usually your Vorpal trait will improve a certain aspect of your character, such as their force functions, certain specials, mechanics that are unique to the character. For, like, for example, Carmine uses less blood for his specials. In the case of Akatsuki I'm playing right now, it um, affects the, the function of its uh, force function. It helps, I think it improves the recovery of it? No, no. Um, Actually, I don't remember what it is, but it is something involving the force function. So that's important to keep in mind when you're playing against an opponent and you're not sure what their vocal trait is. It's important to know what your opponent's vocal trait is. It might help you in the matchup. For example, some characters like Eldum have very strong vocal traits. In sorry, not Inkidu. Uh, Chaos has a really strong vocal trait. It lets him with cancel his doll, which is kind of crazy once you actually uh, get into that matchup. But furthermore, uh, having Whirlpool also gives you the ability to to use uh, Guard Frost for free, which I kind of covered in previous weeks, but I'll just quickly demonstrate again. Uh, okay. So Whirlpool will only cost the uh, Chain Shift. Oh, yeah, we didn't lose it because I said Whirlpool to Infinite on the character, but um, when you actually do use it, you, it only costs the Chain Shift. To, sorry, the Warp, uh, the Whirlpool state itself. So to Warp, that being Whirlpool also gives you the ability to activate Chain Shift. To do Chain Shift, it's just hitting B twice. You can do like 2 DD, 5 DD, and DDD, as long as there's a DD input. Um, you can also do 1 DD, which will cancel a shield into a chain shift. It's well 4 DD. You just need to uh, be careful that you do press the D button very quickly, so that you don't uh, drop the input. So when you chain shift, the screen will freeze for 40, uh, 40 frames, which is uh, like a super flash animation will play. And then you, for 40 frames, you, will, you get to see what's happening on the screen. Uh, everything stops. So if like something's moving on screen, it will quickly stop, and then you get to see what's happening. When you chain shift, your uh, your character gains one frame of invincibility of in-game time. Oh, sorry, within like the actual in-game frame data. So for that one frame where your character is posing, they are fully invincible. That also means that if they're being attacked and there's like one frame of your attack overlapping your character, that means you will invul through it because you have one frame of invincibility. But after that, you return to neutral, like perfectly neutral, and then you can input uh, basically anything you want because you're back to a neutral state. One of the most important things to note when you chain shift is that you convert your chain shift meter into... Sorry, not your chain shift, your grid blocks into uh, meter. So the conversion rate is, if you do it raw, it's 20, 20 EX meter for uh, per block. If you do it um, like in a, a, a block or on hit, it's 12%. Uh, I got 5% from hitting the normal, but it's 12% per block if you do it on block or on hit. And if you do it on like uh, on whiff, like for example, canceling a special move, uh, let's do a whiff, it's about 4%, and, or about 8% for certain moves. Um, that's important to note because having more grid blocks, you can transform that into usable meter. For example, if I convert all this and now have 120 meter, that gives me a lot of options. I can use EX specials. 
combos or um, use it for like reversals and stuff. So having more grit and also having chain shift can give you more meter for characters that really use meter, like Theft, Chaos, like those kind of characters that kind of where having meter really throws the matchup in their favor. It's really useful to have more grid blocks and chain shift to that. So what I also want to cover is like certain uses for chain shift because chain shift also acts as like the roaming cancel of this game if you're used to Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue or like like Street Fighter 4 it kind of works like an FABC almost but the idea is that you can cancel moves and specials into chain shift and that lets you extend combos for example if I did like 2-1-4-P uh, normally I can't combo off of that like mid screen but you can do it in the corner but mid screen I'll have to like chain shift and then you get like small pickup. So you can use it to extend combos. You can also use it as like an offensive tool. Like for example, some characters can like throw a special and then chain shift it. Uh, in the case of Akate, I can do like Fireball CS. And then I have now have a Fireball screen that I can follow after to help me approach my opponent. That's one way you can use uh, chain shift. Like in this case, it's similar to doing like something like Stun Edge YRC if you are familiar with like Guilty Gear. It's like a similar application. You can also use it to make like unsafe moves safe, of course. Like if your opponent like blocks a really unsafe move like 214B. Normally that's jab punishable, but if I chain shift, it's now like very plus a block. You can also get mix ups from it. Uh, for example, I can go high there, or I can do 214B chain shift, go low. So it gives you a lot of options in making your block screens more flexible, making moves safe. Things like that that you might be familiar with, but you, exploring like your options with chain shift is very important. Uh, you can also use chain shift in neutral. For example, if your opponent is doing something, uh, you can also chain shift in neutral and you can stop between the screen and see what he's doing. So when I'm chain shifting here, you can see that uh, I don't have that yeah, you, I chain shifted, and I can look at the screen and see where everything's happening. I clearly see that Seth is hitting his 2A, so he's trying to hit me. But now I can respond with either like a force function or a DP, or I can just block it, or I can back dash. I have a lot of options here. Usually, if your character has an invincible DP uh, that's also meterless, you can that's usually the best option to take. So, for example, here I will chain shift and then. 2-2-B, which is a uh, Akatsuki DP. So let me, how do I get this? Add. <laughs> there we go. So that's one application, freezing screen, checking what your opponent's doing. So, like, a common scenario, aside from just randomly doing it neutral, a common scenario is you do that, like, on defense. So say after you get knocked down, change up on wake up, you see him do a normal, you can respond. Like that. So, chain shift on wake up, very useful. It's a good reversal option to check if your opponent's trying to meet you or trying to, if they're trying to mix you up. You can also use it mid block strings as well. So, for example, you can like, uh, uh, all the input is is just you're literally mashing the D button while you're blocking. Uh, and then I can give you a chain shift. Um, usually, it's best to do hold down and press D. Right. Hold down and press D. Because if you do that, you won't get shields, and then your opponent might not shield, uh, might not just get a, like a free shield break if you're matching your shield button really wildly. So holding down, pressing 2 DD will avoid the shield input or bypass the shield input. Stuff like that. Uh, you also do neutral 5D, but uh, usually if you're if you're trying to block low, then holding down and well, if your your opponent's doing like a tight block thing, like 2 AAAAA, then holding downwards will just auto block it because after you block the first one. If you're still on a tight block screen, all you just have to do is hold the like neutral or stand, or cr sorry, crouching to block low. Um, if that makes sense. Okay. See, I'm just holding down there after the first two A. I'm holding down, and I'm still blocking basically every attack because I'm still in tight block stun. The reason why you don't do uh, five DD is because like that you get hit because you're standing now. So two DD is usually the best option. So. Yeah, sorry. Well, the first hit. 
DDD. And then you get a chain shift, and then you can respond with your DDD, or if you have other options, what function. If your character doesn't have options, it's like shield. Constantly can also air drop. So, a lot of options available. Depending on what character you're playing, you might not have the best option, but you can always at least shield, or like back dash or something. Um, so those are like common scenarios in which you can use chain shift. Um, yeah, I already covered that you can guard frost. That's really important. Uh, so it's a free guard frost, but you do lose your warp state, so you wanna be careful about that. Um, yeah, so that's generally most of what you can do with chain shift. Uh, there are other uh, other like applications where you use them for like uh, really interesting mix-ups. Like you can do like. Uh, like with Inkidu, you can do like the DP, CS whiff, and then you get like other cool mix-ups like that. So as a recap, you can use chain shift to for mix-ups, for combos, for block springs, uh, making moves safe, as an approach tool when you do like fireball CS, which is good. And you can also use it on defense to freeze the screen, watch what your opponent is doing, and provide some kind of response. So that's mostly the basics of chain shift. Um, I'm gonna move into throw option selecting now. So I'm gotta, I actually gotta set some new recordings now, so just give me a second. Uh, okay. So say dash 2A, dash row. Uh, oh. Sorry. Okay, no, sorry, hold on. Okay, there we go. So. All right, so let's talk about option selects. So what is an option select? My definition of an option select is basically when you do a single input and you can have multiple outcomes from that one single input based on the state of which your character is in. So for example, if you press like uh, 5C AD, that can take a throw, but that can also anti air at the same time. So that's kind of the basis of what I'm gonna try to get into. Hopefully it'll make sense. So. Well, the most common option select in uni is uh, a throw option select. So what you want to, what it is, is you're taking a throw while also doing something else at the same time. For this scenario, we're gonna focus on taking a throw and also anti-airing your opponent. So a common scenario in which you will find that an opponent will use to approach you if they might do a block string and then dash up throw, or a block string and then dash up assault. So this situation is. It's hard to deal with individually if you try to do each option by if you try to defend each option on its own. So for example, if you know the pro's coming, you can check the pro. You can check the pro. If you know the assault is coming, you can anti-air it. Yeah, so you can anti-air the um, let's go, the assault. But if you try to do the other option for sorry, if you try to do the wrong response to the wrong option, it's not gonna work. So for example, if your opponent's gonna dash up uh, pro and you try to anti a five C, it's not gonna work because you're not taking a pro. And if you try to take a pro or your opponent's trying to assault, all you're gonna do is with a with a pro. So that's why you need to combine these inputs together, and then you can get a pro off this life. Um, I'm actually gonna switch characters to um if you do, because that's a little more comfortable for me to input. So Enkidu's anterior is in this case 4C, uh, this one. So that's his primary anterior, uh, as well as like 3C, but for, we're gonna use 4C in this scenario. So the input for a full off like is usually whatever your character's best anterior button is, plus AD. So for example, in this case, Enkidu's throw off like will be 4C, 4C AD. You can see the input say, I hit 4C first, and then I blink quickly to AD. Uh, uh, you gotta make sure you do the button you want first, because if you do AD first, what's gonna happen is that you just get a throw with. So, you can't be AD, C, because the throw will take priority. So it has to be 4C, AD. Okay. So, you gotta imagine your opponent is approaching you, and then it's, it's gonna be the same scenario. Both situations look almost identical. If your opponent then means dash up 5A, and then they're gonna dash up again, and then you expect something coming, but you're not entirely sure if it's gonna be a throw or an assault. And that's when you're gonna opt to flex. So there, I anti him. In this scenario, I take the throw. So, 
If I do random playback, I should be able to respond to both options, even though I'm only doing one input. I mean, up here and there. Up here and there. Up here again. Ah, I missed it. Okay, there we go. So that's the basics of option selecting. It's just within a situation where you think your opponent might do one or another option, you want to combine multiple inputs to cover both options rather than just one or the other. So in the case of this uh, dash up pro, dash up assault, it's anterior button plus your pro tech button. Um, there are other universal option select options that are available to every character. Um, I will demonstrate them, but I need to be here. So, it's okay. so another common uh, for OS that people tend to use, like characters like Hilda, who don't have uh, amazing anti-airs, or like Chaos might use, is uh, ABC, with, uh, which gives you roll, the, the bell off, and then you put that into Pro. So if you don't have a head invincible normal, that can be pretty usable sometimes. Click that or yeah. So you anti air with the vel off, or you take the pro with the um, with the with the pro. So that's another option that you can do. Um, if you have low health, you can also do uh, IWEXS. Usually that's a little riskier. Um, not riskier, but not as beneficial sometimes because if it's not gonna kill you might just kinda grip break yourself. So you gotta be careful about that one if you really wanna use it or not. But it does work. Like it does beat anti air and it does beat um, sorry, it does beat jump ins and it does beat so. Um on top of that you can also do another option select which is one seven uh one seven eight sorry one seven eighty one um this is this is commonly known as a fuzzy jump, which is common in like uh, Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue. Um, also appears in Street Fighter sometimes. But all of this is uh, you do down back, you do up back AD, which will give you air shield. Uh, the air shield can uh, shield the uh, assault, while the AD button will also take a grab as well if you got thrown instead. So if I demonstrate that as so, let's try to play back again. One, two, uh, Ah. Oh, actually, it says um, it doesn't quite hit myself like that. Sorry. Uh, let's try a new uh, example. Example. Oh, what the heck? Whoa, okay. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, the timing's different. I gotta do better. Alright, so what was I doing again? Uh, yeah, jump back here. So you can either uh, uh, shield the uh, assault or take the probe. Or oh, So that's another option that you can use that's almost universal to every character in the game. Um, a lot of characters have like more unique options. Like they can use, might be able to use their force function or they might be able to use um, a special that is available to them that can also anti air as well as uh, Tekken Pro. Uh, in Enkidu's case, you can do like um, DPA or you can do also force, uh, force function. Oh, that's yeah. So his force function can also be used in option select as well. Uh, you should explore whatever your character's options are, but uh, usually if your character has a good pro option select, it's listed somewhere in the uh, Uni Discord. So just ask and, or look for it and it's probably there. Um, Aside from assaults, you can also option select other situations. For example, if, if there is Zed doing 5A-5A versus 5A-Pro, you can also do 1AD. So 1AD just gives you um, shield plus protect. This is um, obviously not very useful against um, assault because it's not hitting anti-air, it's just uh, doing a low shield. So that can be useful for this kind of thing. I, I shield the uh, dash back in, or if they threw, oh, if they threw, 
I take the frog. So 1 AD also can be used as an option select. You just gotta be careful you're not uh, trying to use this option select against people jumping in on you. Uh, another common option select that's also universal is uh, 2 AD. So what 2 AD does is it does crouching light or crouching jab while also being able to tech throw. Um, this is commonly referred to as a crutch tech if you play like a lot of Street Fighter 4 where 2 AD will give you this. Uh, so why you might want to use that one as opposed to another option select is that if your opponent does dash up nothing, like 5A dash up nothing, then it's good for getting your turn back. So you can uh, usually they're trying. The, the reason why your opponent might do that is because they're trying to bait something, but you're not really going to do anything that committal. So instead, you're just going to do like 280. Take your turn. So that's another option like that's available to you. It can also sometimes beat your opponent out if they're not doing their stagger pressure properly. Uh, play back. Play the pro. I got rid of the second one. Well, I'll just take So yeah, you can also hit your opponent out if you do 2 AD as well. If you time it properly, or if your opponent mistimed something. So, 2 AD is going to give you a crushing jab. Um, furthermore, you can also do backdash AD, which gives you uh, backdash plus protect. So the input is just 4 AD plus AD. Um, 4 AD plus AD, or you can do back back AD. Uh, whatever's more comfortable for you, usually 4 AD is all you hear. So in this scenario, you will either backdash or tech the throw. Or sometimes you might just backdash the throw if you time it properly. Or if you time it differently. So if I put the play back on random again. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. So I can backdash the throw, or I can, if I do it late enough, I'll choose to do it later. I can take it. In the second scenario in which she uh, does dash up, dash up jab again. Uh, there we go. I can just backdash the, uh, her jab. Um, usually this helps just like best mid-screen because you have more space to get out of the scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Any time later. There we go. So it's usually best mid-screen because you have more space to move back. If you do it in the corner, you just end up back in the corner and you're like kind of negative still. So that's not really useful. There we go. Yeah, so back to actual west, not very good in the corner, but really good mid-screen. Um, so those are like the main common throw options like used that used universally by any character. Again, explore your character's options. Some characters have like way better options likes than what I show what I've demonstrated. But that also like just kind of depends on what your character is. Um, so the other option selects exist, but I only mainly focused on option selects that deal with throw plus something else. But uh, there are other other options like like on hit OSs, um, other kinds of defensive o defensive OSs against like stuff like cross ups or like um, like overheads or lows. But th those are like for another time. But so today I just mainly want to focus on throws because dash up throw versus dash up. Uh, sorry, dash up throw versus dash up button or dash up assault is really common in this game, and that's a common way you apply pressure. So that's a throw option tech is also a common way to defend against these situations as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me in DMs or in the video or in the chat. But uh, that kind of concludes today's lesson. Thank you for uh, listening. We'll see you again next week.